first uh, i would like uh, all the panelists to introduce themselves with uh, uh, in uh, one or two minutes time about uh, what they do how they do and what's been their career highlights so we can start with the madam first yeah thank you so hi my name is rashi gupta and i am the chief growth officer for azure ai i'm a data scientist by profession uh, running this company for 5 years uh, so all i do is all data is what uh, you know we do at rezo so to tell you a bit about rezo rezo is primarily uh, you know you give these collections to a call center we are also typically hello 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 so you can treat us just like a typical contact center it's just we are not human led we are doing anything and everything what we do uh, all reach outs just like over email over chat over social over voice is all powered by machine learning ai we are 100 odd people today but none of us is a caller everybody is just working either on the product or data science or technology so that's a quick brief about us uh, we are majorly working in the automobile sector six months back we ventured in the collection and uh, you know the differentiator for us is our connect rates are massively very you know very good and we are doing some very good recovery for a couple of enterprises that we are working with thank you Much. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting uh, me over here. I think uh, this is a very interesting panel discussion, especially uh, with respect to collections and recovery. And uh, I've seen a lot of a uh, lot of service providers over here, and each one of them are distinct from each other. And I think uh, it would be a pretty interesting evening today to uh, discuss with each of them on what are the service offerings. So myself, Suraj Shetty. I am from Kisht. I had customer experience for Kisht and Ring. Kisht and Ring both are digital lending platform. So Kisht uh, uh, so services uh, individuals. We provide personal loans and consumer durable loans to retail customers in India. India. And Ring is a platform which provides loans to small merchants, merchants, wholesalers, and retailers in India. And we have more than three lakh merchants signed up with Ring, and we provide loans and credit uh, facility on a daily basis to them digitally. thank you well hi good afternoon to all of you i am anuj anand and uh, i am associated with ecl finance which is a lending arm for uh, elwise financial services i have been with elwise financial services since last 3 and a half years now i head the legal and the recovery piece for uh, uh, ecl finance been an out and out uh, well for uh, 190 basically into both the segments uh, housing finance as well as uh, the sme lending predominantly we i am a part of sme uh, lending team and we fund to uh, the upcoming and the established sme of the country and uh, yes uh, 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 we also happen to fund on the uh, on the secured and the unsecured pieces thank you yeah hi i am the vishesh mohanty uh, so uh, i work with yes bank uh, as a head of collection strategy and analytics also work as a portfolio uh, strategist uh, i was a jet professional over uh, decade and a half years of experience into retail banking rural banking business banking and inclusive banking uh, i graduated in in terms of collection strategy analytics in uh, work for icici bank then i joined yes bank so uh, decade and a half years experience in throughout in collection strategy and analytics in risk management basically thank you so uh, we have a bunch of years of experience in terms of collection and all uh, i am sunil gaushinde i am heading uh, collection vertical for uh, vartana finance uh, vartana finance is an organization which is uh, pioneering into school funding so we are more of a bharat uh, school funders rather than india so we have uh, we are a 10 years old company we have funded almost uh, 7000 schools pan india 
and we have a presence in more than 16 states. Uh, we also uh, have our presence into student loans which are into more of a vocational courses. So uh, that's a portfolio which we are trying to grow into. Prior to joining Vartana last year in June, I was associated with uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank for uh, 15 years. So that's how about me. So thank you all for uh, giving uh, your introductions. So let us move right upon uh, the topic which we have to discuss is managing multi-channel debt collection model. So uh, I mean, it's it's a time for being all-rounder. Uh, in the in the cricket team also, if we see, uh, we need a person who can bowl, who can bat, who can field, and even who can have a smart thinking nowadays, like when fielding, how to field and those all things. So that's what is now expected from the collection people all across the organizations. So uh, if we talk about collections, more interestingly, we can define it into two different era. One is uh, pre-COVID and another is post-COVID. So uh, my first question to all the panelists would be like, what kind of changes you guys have seen uh, in, within your work, work environment? What, what are the changes which you have seen what's, uh, the COVID has brought? Definitely a paradigm shift, but yes, uh, how, how, I mean, how it started and how, how did you guys cope up? Very, very open question, but I would like you to summarize it to two or two and a half minutes because sure. we have a time constraint. Definitely. So, uh, the, I would uh, sum this up into five important points that pre-COVID uh, versus post-COVID. We have seen uh, pre-COVID versus post-COVID, uh, regulations have become much tighter. Uh, and we are uh, we are very fortunate that we have one of the best regulators, that is the Reserve Bank of India. And uh, given that during COVID, a lot of customers were facing financial issues in making payments, medical issues, etc. Uh, there were a lot of unregistered players in the market which had harassed the customers and due to which a, new, a lot of new regulations with respect to collections and digital lending have come up. So this is a major change pre-COVID to post-COVID. Second, I would say is companies have increasingly started realizing that collection is not an independent uh, activity. It has to be merged with customer experience or customer service activities. As uh, we rightly saw in the previous presentation, uh, it is very much necessary that customer service teams work along with collections teams so that whenever there is an escalation or any kind of uh, customer grievance, it has to be addressed immediately before the customer escalates to uh, a third party like, uh, a, like a regulator or uh, some other uh, uh, regulatory agencies like cybercrime or police or RBI. Third, I would say is customers have become much more educated post-COVID, they have, uh, they now very well know how to approach uh, any other authority when they are in, uh, when they are facing a grievance compared to pre-COVID, people were not aware how to uh, stop calls, how to stop any harassment. Now they very much know how they can complain to RBI, to complain to cybercrime or to any other authorities. Fourth, I would say is there is an emergence of uh, automation tools available for collection as well as for customer service, uh, be it chatbots, voice was etc which was uh, very limited pre -co in the pre-covid data and fifth i would say is a lot of analytical service providers have come up in the collections and customer service space which help uh, which help companies to uh, navigate the, uh, the data that they have right now so pre-covid customer uh, companies were a lot of uh, they were clueless as to what should they do with the data but now uh, they are m way much smarter uh, with respect to use usage of data as well as uh, with respect to how and when to communicate to the customer uh, with respect to collection calls. Okay. So in my mind, uh, you know, we started operating in this space only post-COVID. Uh, but I think a lot of businesses came to a, you know, standstill, uh, you know, at the time of COVID. And as a result, digitalization was put on the front burners, right? Uh, all this while it has been sitting at the back burners, you know, where the traditional businesses has been operating the way they were operating. But now, just because of the COVID times where the call centers, you know, the, the field agents, all of this came to a sudden standstill. Businesses started to realize that unless and until we adopt uh, digitalization, that we will not be, what if it reoccurs or anything of this similar sort reoccurs. So digitalization came to a forefront and, you know, we have been majorly an enabler for recovery in a way, right? So uh, I think 
a lot of analytics, a lot of understanding the data has come to the forefront. And I think they're liking the way, I think, uh, you know, they have, the businesses haven't seen this as a change in the past. And now they're big time leveraging all of this data to basically, uh, you know, understand their customer, to bring in empathy when they are talking. So a lot of analytics has been brought into the system. Okay. Any of you? So, uh, you know, when I say COVID, this is once in a lifetime black swan event which has occurred in uh, almost everybody's life. So, life had come to a stand, complete standstill and we had, uh, you know, absolutely no idea what is to be done about it. So, uh, all those things which we, were, we used to do uh, before COVID, uh, were redundant and have made absolutely no sense in uh, the post-COVID days. We were shifting to new normal. As my friend uh, Surat said, I mean, use of technology in the pre-COVID era was very limited. I mean, all, all of us people who are uh, part of collections and recoveries, we hardly used to use technology. Rather, the people who were going on field never thought of using technology to the core, I mean, the way we are using it now. I mean, so this is the life, uh, I mean, life changed dramatically. I mean, there was, a, there was a paradigm shift, life was upside down. So, you know, survival was the first instinct when the, when the COVID hit. And with the use of technology, I think uh, uh, we were not only able to, we, we survived also and with the use of technology, we are here in front of all of us and we are up kicking, uh, you know, we are growing as well. So, yeah, uh, technology, uh, as per me, technology has played a very, very big role. Uh, in in the post covid era because uh, i feel that with the use of technology now uh, you know the customer engagement and the team engagement is just one click away with with so many mis's being floated day in and day out we know what all areas are being targeted and what all you know problem areas are to be targeted so this is how i th i feel that uh, COVID has changed us all because, you know, there was no, there were no options left to us. You know, we were thrown into a, a, a pool of uh, uncertainties. Pro uncertainties and problems everywhere where survival was a question. So I feel uh, COVID has helped us uh, evolve as humans as well as collectors. That's a really <laughs> good punchline, I would say. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, COVID, unprecedented event to mankind as well as customer as well. So, there is a, uh, though all of the points have been uh, covered, so digital footprint, yes, of course, there is a complete transformation of uh, digital footprints. Uh, second thing, uh, we spoke about the uh, analytics and usage of uh, advanced analytics and uh, data science. But I would touch upon one point that is three C's. So it's customer communication and uh, customer uh, control and uh, customer choice. So three things that transformed heavily in, th in this pandemic. Also, uh, we need to see the regulatory aspect that has changed uh, that because we are working in a very regulated business. Banking is a very regulated business. So. The customer trend in the customer segment that were good, that means uh, 2020, prior to 2020, cases were under 10. Now they get into restructuring, they get into ECLGS, emergency credit line guarantee, uh, as well as your uh, moratorium. So that means, in a way, the customer you under to into certain, uh, in banking terms, it's called fire, has been over leverage from 7% to 20%. So we need to deal with the customer with more tactic. Yeah. So that so is the challenges also it comes post COVID. So, uh, that's what like uh, I mean uh, I'll just take uh, your line to the next thing. So if I have to summarize like the, the, as uh, you all have said, the life has changed 360 degree post COVID for collection people. And uh, one important aspect I would like to take here uh, from here uh, that. Uh, most of the teams, like sales was almost closed at that time, uh, credit was also not. I mean, if, if you talk about any finance company, so from the, the two aspects, they were like not doing business and all. And it was the collection people who had to work on the front line. And 
we all know what is called sympathy and empathy. So we, as collection people, had to work with a lot of empathy, not just with uh, our internal customers, like our employees also, somebody's family would be suffering from COVID or not, but we'll have to have empathy and ensure that whatever the time or, or, or uh, possibility he has, he can spend it on uh, collection or helping the organization. That too with the customers also. So a lot of empathy factor which has came and uh, I would say individually it made it strong to all of us. And that's a behavioral aspect if you talk about uh, that. My next question to that, I will the extension of this. So these are the challenges which we have seen. So, so uh, this question would be more uh, uh, related to Anuj and uh, Suresh to answer that like, the challenges which all have come. So how did you guys uh, came out of this obstacles and how it transformed your business and uh, what kind of results you got, how you analyze and how was the journey? So that, that's what just wanted to understand. So uh, what we did is uh, during COVID, we, uh, we usually we track customer services very closely. We see what kind of queries customers come uh, keep bringing day in and day out. And what we observed is as soon as the COVID wave started, a lot of customers started calling asking for more time or asking for some relaxation on the some on the late fees charge or on the platform or settlement option etc so uh, when we saw that there is an increase in uh, request for relaxation on loan payments so before even before rbi came up with the uh, regulation on providing moratorium to customers we started offering relaxation to customers so uh, it was not like a six months or a one year relaxation we start we analyzed the data that what our customers looking for we saw that majority of customers in the initial phase of the COVID wave, they were looking for a small relaxation, like oh, I need a 15 days time to make payment, or I need 5 days time, or I need 1 month time, not more than that. So we started giving moratorium options to these customers for this small time period that they were looking for, and a uh, nominal interest was charged to them, and even when in cases where customers was were severely impacted, we even waived off the interest for them. It was an interest-free moratorium for them. The second, uh, we saw that there was, there was a different uh, category of customers who were not looking for time, uh, who were not looking for moratorium they were just they just wanted uh, the communication to stop they just wanted calls sms and emails that come to them to stop for a specific period say 3 months and or 1 month or 3 months and we did just that for them so uh, what this helped us in doing is uh, we came to know that moratorium is not the uh, single uh, solution to all uh, problems that customers are facing because once you give moratorium customers would uh, would not uh, pay till the end of moratorium period but when you are stop communication still the customer has pressure to pay because he knows that his credit score is getting impacted over there so that was second solution third solution that we came out with is uh, there were customers who were not looking for any communication stop nor moratorium they just wanted a small waiver on the late fees like a 10 percent 20 percent waiver so we offered those waivers and prior to covid we saw that even for a small waiver an approval has to be taken but during COVID, we removed all these approvals. We said that the agent himself can immediately provide a, a waiver of 10 to 50 percent, and beyond 50 percent, of course, he can appro uh, approach for an approval. So we were giving up waivers on late fees like anything. So uh, at least like uh, around uh, 25 to 30 percent customers have availed waivers. And uh, they never, uh, they just uh, have to approach us and they have to tell us that I need a relaxation and immediately provide it to them. So this is what we did during the COVID times and we realized that uh, by using these three steps, uh, collections from people who are not otherwise ready to pay, collections had moved up 35% for those who are otherwise not ready to pay at all we are not given the solutions to them. So uh, what we did is post-COVID we continued the solutions and even today if customer uh, approaches us and says that he is not able to make a payment, he needs some time, we do offer these solutions to them. Uh, of course they are not as liberal as they used to be during the COVID period but we do have the solutions so, so that customers. That, that, that's a learning which, which came from COVID that yes people may have may be facing difficulties and we should as an organization help them to yes so that that's uh, that's how the, the collection empathy, empathy part empathy uh, part so which was usually for customer service because is a reserve for customer service now it has come to collections thank you uh, anuj uh, your thoughts on this 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, honestly, when when all of this started, uh, I feel the government had uh, played a very pivotal role uh, as far as uh, the repayments of the loans were concerned. Whether it is an, you know, whether it is to individuals, to corporates, or to MSMEs, government had a very, you know, multi-pronged approach towards it. Whether uh, we talk about moratorium, whether we talk about payment holidays, whether we talk about uh, the emergency, uh, you know, credit guarantee line, the ECLGS schemes. So I feel, uh, you know, half of the job uh, was uh, done by the government by giving us a. Uh, uh, clear cut guidelines on how do we go, how do we take it forward. Uh, the biggest challenge in front of all of us were, you know, mostly uh, during the pre COVID era, uh, the, the lending industry as a whole was working on a very conventional mode. So, uh, where, you know, there was a field collector who was going to the doorstep and collecting the payments, and suddenly that option is not available with you and then I mean everybody started thinking that what do we do next because first thing uh, was survival and the second thing was uh, uh, getting profitable correct so uh, I mean uh, so as far as we were concerned uh, so uh, for us uh, there were there were two things which was which were you know really very important one was the customer engagement and the other was the team engagement we felt that you know on on this is the these two points i think uh, we will be able to uh, not only get the system back on track make it productive and ultimately productivity would lead to the profitability so that is how the approach was and uh, honestly with with time and with a lot of brainstorming sessions we could figure out uh, ways and means with the help of technology, our internal IT teams, and with the help of MIS, uh, the various MISs, uh, we could figure out a way that uh, how to engage with our customers, how to engage with our team. So it was very important during that time that our team is engaged with us, we all are on the same page, we have that kind of empathy uh, where you know, we do not sound uh, uh, rude to customers or uh, in a way where customer feels that, uh, you know, loan are to be repaid and that is the only motto. So, we were very empathetic and uh, we gave opportunity to customers like uh, uh, Suraj also said in, the, in his statement that we were very, uh, uh, you know, very caring about the thought with that uh, we should not be charging penal charges and we should not be charging anything more to the customer so that it will put so, yeah, so uh, as an organization you are trying to provide the ways how you can give relief to the customer that's right that's right uh, taking from you like uh, the point which you said is uh, the collection was working more with a conventional method uh, both in terms of, uh, I mean, both the sides, I would say, the uh, organization side and the customer side also. So, my the next question, like, especially for Dr. Rashi and Debashish, I would like them to answer to that is, uh, I mean, we have seen in, uh, it started in pre-COVID, but uh, it evolved more into post-COVID, like uh, the Dash and uh, UPI payments, other digital ways of payments. So evolution of these things, I mean, as a collection strategy person, you would be uh, in a better person to let us know how it impacted the effectiveness of collection tools as a department, uh, reduction of the efforts in collecting money. And Dr. Rashi, from your side, I would like to hear that uh, how you, I mean, you are associated with uh, uh, the organization which helps the organizations to be more effective with collect uh, collections. So how these tools are helping the organization to be more cost effective, but yes, more profit effective also. So, to start. Yeah. So, uh, speak well, a bit near. Okay. Uh, I'm audible now? Yeah. 
Yeah. So when we speak about, so many many of us have spoke about digital transformation. So world is moving towards digital transformation, and India is answering to them. And uh, if I put a starts behind it, uh, so I heard uh, uh, the issue of investment in India uh, day for yesterday. So we are the f highest data consumer uh, in terms of uh, it's uh, if you put together US and China. Put together, we are the per capita data consumer in terms of highest data con uh, data uh, consumer. So, when uh, we source account, we source the account to account number. Then why we should not take the payment back from account number digitally? So, the concept comes here. Why somebody should go to a receipt book and take the payment back from the customer? Why there is not uh, automation and taking back the money? Through automated way, so there should be a there would be a digital uh, end to end uh, journey for the customer, which uh, starts from the allocation till the payment applications. Also leading to many data science and analytics to it, so it will make it cohort basis where customer need a assisted mode of payment and customer can pay directly and customer require in person assistance to pay the uh, pay back the money. Yeah, uh, my question was uh, actually getting more deeper into that is like uh, more of a uh, choice being given to the customer or making it more easy for them. Yeah. Because uh, now the technology enabled uh, helps us to take uh, uh, UPI payment as as easy as possible through like say Google Pay or Paytm or 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 or, or any any other mode or uh, ECS or Nash is always there and the banks have the advantage of a standing instruction. So so the conventional method of check. I mean, uh, all of you will agree to that. You, your sign will mismatch if you sign a check now. Yeah, so true, it, it is with most of the people. So now we are into a different world where where we have to get into a different uh, digital sign or something like that. So that's where uh, the, the role of uh, the organizations, which where from Dr. Rashi comes. So uh, how how you help the organizations to? Up with that, with and uh, one more thing is another aspect I wanted to add here is that collection teams are not considered as very tech savvies because we are we as a uh, fraternity are learning to use technology recently. We are the late comers in that. So you will have to consider that aspect also that people on the ground will not be so familiar with the technology. So uh, having that kind of user interface, easiness with them, uh, and uh, yes, effectiveness also. So that's the challenge I throw it to you. Sure. So to be honest, I think uh, you know you, you guys know your customer extremely well. You know you know the strategies which are working. At least we pretend to. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the truth is that you know your customer base very well. You know the strategies that will work with them very well. And the idea is when we come in, we come in as a powerhouse of data, right? We are not saying that we know everything, but we work with you, we leverage the models, we leverage the data to be able to bring about uh, something which is more creative. And we do a lot of tremendous sort of calling is what is uh, majorly what Rezo is into. So you can give me a base of like a uh, 1 lakh or 10 lakh, whatever it is, and you say this is my lost customer, this is my bucket one customer, an easy lot like a, like a reminder sort of a calling. Now when you're calling up the customer, right, uh, this empathy is very, very critical right the customer is saying aaj mere bank mein paisa nahi hai main bista ko aayega to de dunga so he is actually voicing out his voice ki main 20 tarikh ko hi de sakta hu you are sitting on the second today i can't make that payment now what we do at rezo is we note this voice of the customer and i will be not nagging my customer till i reach the day the due date maybe i call them on the 18th or the 19th and then we drive these kind of collections. Yeah, but uh, there is one more aspect to that is, this customer might be fooling you that he'll get money on 20th, he might be buying time. So we, we come across so many customers like that. So that's why 
I, I, I yeah. use the terminology hear, empathy than rather than sympathy. I hear you. What we also do is we also look back. It's not only the current data. Obviously, you, when you start, right, you know your customer. But then when you're giving me a base to try to drive this kind of a collection, we also look through at the back end, right? So the role of AI comes So the role of data, the role of AI, the role of looking through the data, looking through the pattern. Who are the guys who have paid digitally in the past? Okay. What kind of a medium have they used in the past to make the payment? right uh, what day tentatively he makes the payment uh, you know how many people are he's getting the check in his, his salary is getting credited on this date so we leverage a lot of that science to be able to drive that and then there is the power of the voice of the customer he's actually on the bots telling you that this is my problem mere bank mein paisa hai aap auto debit kar lo even if he doesn't have that auto debit capability, but he's giving it out to you. So you can, once you hear that, you can actually enroll him for an auto debit. So it's just hearing them, tracking every single verbatim, logging that into your CRM to enable this for not today, but for the future, right? So you, you drive collections like that in a very, it's like a you know, smart contact centers, smart contact strategy is what we bring about to be able to drive it. And obviously this happens at a much reduced cost in a very intelligent manner. Yeah. So uh, actually, I am a very fortunate moderator where all my panel members are giving me clues for the next question. As you said about contact center. So my next question to both of you gentlemen is that uh, uh, when we talk about contact center, so it, it's, it, it's related with the communication with the customer. So, so in the new era, there are uh, the methods which have changed from communicating with the customers. The way we used to approach differently. Now, uh, a lot of uh, AI enabled or technology port calling and those all things comes into place. So, uh, how did you guys, your organizations have managed uh, the shift of uh, uh, a manual kind of thing to the technological thing and how it helped positively, negatively, neutrally uh, towards the achieving the motto? So, uh, when it comes to connect, uh, communication, what we have, uh, not just uh, now, uh, it was present even pre-COVID, what we do is uh, we communicate customers in the language. First of all, the language is very important when it comes to communication. So we communicate to customers in the language that they understand. And to know this uh, preferred language, uh, there are two uh, uh, routes through which we come to know this. One is when the customer is approaching to us through our app, he is applying for a loan, we ask for the preferred language. Uh, but that can be, uh, that may not be an accurate data because he would be in a hurry to apply for a loan, he would just select any English or something and he would uh, move forward. Second, whenever customer interacts with any team throughout the organization, be it a sales team, customer service team, collections team or any field team, whenever there is an interaction on any uh, front at the company, uh, the language of the customer is noted in the system. So this helps us, so, when, uh, so next time when we have to do a collection call to the customer, the system already knows that this is the preferred language of the customer, Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, Marathi, etc. And accordingly, the IVR calls, SMS, WhatsApp or email that goes to the customer goes in that language. Especially the IVR calls because the call would not be, uh, the customer would not be comfortable uh, with the language. If, for example, he is a Telugu customer and if he gets a Hindi call, he would not understand it. So, and the entire purpose of the communication would get lost. So, language is number one. Uh, second, uh, I would say is uh, now understanding the situation of the customer is also an important part, the context uh, uh, of the call. So, whenever, so this has happened post COVID now. So whenever customer raises uh, an issue at the collection call uh, that he is not, uh, as for example, if he is adamant to pay, number one. Second, if the customer is threatening uh, for a complaint that uh, I do not want any calls, I should not get any calls, I would complain, etc. Or third, if the customer is facing a genuine issue like a medical issue or a financial issue, it's a very serious issue and the caller is able to recognize it when he has, uh, when he has been speaking to the customer. In such cases, we move such... Uh, cases to a different uh, team which is much more empathetic and much more understanding and the communication strategy suddenly changes and much more empowered also much more it. empowered also so they have authority to give waivers to give settlement options they have authority to give relaxations on the communication they can stop calls 
and they also engage with the customer uh, in a much more deeper manner a collection caller would just call him and say sir aapka collection baki hai aapka this is the amount uh, can you pay it today i uh, can you please uh, pay it right now i am sending you the link but these caller they would be uh, the kind of script that they follow is different they are much more empathetic and they do much more deeper conversations the call time would be like uh, 13 15 minutes they understand what is the problem they try to convince him convince him to at least make a part payment and uh, try to build a relationship with him so that uh, the customer doesn't just pay he remains he becomes a repeat customer also tomorrow so this is how we manage communication so one is the language front and uh, second is understanding the uh, problem that the customer is facing and immediately moving him to a different okay yes anuj see honestly uh, uh, customer communication in a country like india is always is always challenging so uh, we all know that uh, we have such a large and uh, you know very demographic uh, situations in india where every 7 uh, kilometers the lingo changes and forget about the states i mean communication in this country has uh, uh, always been so beautiful since the ancient times in fact uh, within the city also we have negative and positive areas correct so <laughs> so uh, rightly said so <coughs> our experiences in terms of customer experience and customer engagement and customer communication has been uh, uh, an evolving process basically uh, when we talk about the technology uh, you know coming in and bringing changes in the customer communication the uh, see like voice bots and chat bots and ivr calls uh, this was the time Uh, covid was the time when all of these things were evolving at a very fast pace so uh, you know during the first 3 months of covid we uh, we were hearing about ivr calls being made uh, voice bots being introduced chat bots being introduced and then in the next 3 months uh, we hear about uh, linguistic voice bots being introduced in the system linguistic uh, chat bots being introduced in the system ai coming into the picture so i mean the the world was evolving so fast that uh, you know a decision which was taken 3 months prior looks like redundant uh, you know looked very redundant in place after 3 months because at the entire technological shift was happening very fast so you know it was very important to identify pain points and the impact areas where we could bring in the change in in terms of customer communication and you know one effective communication with the customer in those days used to bring us uh, the account being regular so that is that is high uh, you know that as high as impact it can create so you can Im imagine the the importance what communicate you know customer communication was right. so that because uh, we are living in an uh, in, a, in an arena or a, or a time frame where uh, we will have various opportunities with a customer and, and uh, as he said rightly that uh, i mean one event of default does not mean that he is not my customer true and uh, uh, i mean another aspect which uh, suraj has touched is that he can be my repeated customer Absolutely. so that is one thing which which uh, which takes us to the uh, next thing like the customer journey so uh, the covid has made us learn that every defaulter is not a bad customer it, it could be incidental or intentional so we'll have to differentiate between what is incidental and what is intentional so they, it takes us to the to the journey to the customer experience how how it, it, it takes so i would uh, like to Uh, take Mr. Mohanty also into that. And how how do we take ahead that journey of customers uh, who are incidental defaulters? I would we we can categorize in intentional into a different thing. But we had seen in COVID a lot of incidental defaulters. So uh, the, those incidental defaulters are good people, but क्या देना वक्त के मारे हैं. 
So both <laughs> that, that is one thing. And after that, I would like to add, uh, uh, take addition from Dr. Rashi that, uh, like for these kind of customers, how how does your your uh, technology uh, health organization to understand these are the customers who are good and are to be treated in a different manner, and how can your your platform help? Uh, with that? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, Sumit, so you rightly pointed out that okay, one event of default may not be uh, signifying that it's not my customer. So if you we'll see uh, where we stand as a, as an economy uh, right now, uh, with the uh, mean uh, age of 32 and the credit age of uh, the principal take a credit holder mean age that is around 31 with a median of 27. If you we'll calculate, there is a 33 year. So uh, here you can calculate the 33 years of credit exploration. So that means the life cycle has to go another 33 years. So uh, that means abandoning anyone for uh, at, the, at the first place may not help for the lenders. So at the same time, you need to identify the right customer. So who is my right customer? Every customer is not good. Every customer is not bad. So identifying when it comes to a collection play or when it comes to a collection base, then you need to identify good customer out of the bad customer and the bad customer out of the good customer. So in uh, in analytical language, it's called as a confusion matrix. <laughs> so, uh, two positive and two negative. When we, uh, when we switch account with the intention that this customer will come good and will repay me back with the certain committed IRR that I have given. So, uh, I have planned for some uh, interest rate that I will earn, but somehow there is uh, uh, there is a deviation in your thought. Uh, that means your underwriting. That means something you planned it as good turned into bad. When it also comes to collection, then it's already bad. So you need to identify what is good out of the bad. So uh, uh, that means you need to identify with a very good scorecard module. So uh, that means uh, uh, recently many of the scorecards have evolved where they identify which are the good customer out of the bad customer. Even if it is a customer who is coming to the stress first time, is there any incipient risk behind it? Because larger customer experience in, in my opinion. Totally agree to that. Dr. Rashi, uh, uh, you need to take us ahead. Like good customers, bad customers, all are our customers. And we are here to earn from them. How? Yeah. So uh, how do you guys can help? How do you guys, I mean, the technology piece can help us to earn from both the customers? Yeah, so the idea is that the data is king these days, right? It has, it holds a lot of know-how. Uh, and if you try, you just need partners who understand data and you are, they are working with you. I'm not saying that we are the guys who will be able to take those calls because we don't know the business, we don't know your customers so well. But we understand data, we understand AI, we understand machine learning and we will be able to model things the way you want, right? So, so far we've been working with a couple of companies. I think I have only learned from them because we were very new six months back in the space. And I think uh, we took up EMI reminder, we, we took took up Inatch and I think the way now we are driving, the driving conversions, driving response rate and driving it with a success, right? If you, if you get paid, please pay us, else not. And I think this whole science and you power this science with the data at the back end, right? Obviously, mingling that with, uh, you know, your factors of knowing your customer, what are the strategies, what would strategy would you like to roll, how would you like to roll? I think bringing all of that together and hearing 
at the end of the day it's the customer right we can also be in the same shoes tomorrow so just be more empathetic right figuring out where the bluffing is happening uh, who's the genuine customer who's saying bis tarikh ko denga right but his history says ki yaar bis tarikh ko is the first time defaulter so figuring that out who can i trust who can i not building a score for individual customer based on what he is talking how he has behaved in the past and leveraging that whole science to be able to drive collection rather than going very you know very aggressively on the strategies and you know just bombarding them with the voice bots and you know with the field people to do, just go ahead and do the collection right uh, so i think we really need to take a step back there is a lot of evolution uh, you know uh, and you have also i mean as organizations you you're sitting on that massive massive data it's just not being utilized at the moment yeah. and we at the other hand are very happy to learn those models with you because we don't know that science right we don't know the business so well so understanding from your point is like it's it's the plural thing which collection has there is no one set process or uh, methodology you can be used for uh, various custom as we say india is a plural idea so i would say uh, collection and recovery is also a plural idea so when uh, the topic of our says is like panel discussion on managing multi channel debt collection model so as i initially also said it's all about all round performance Correct. so uh, managing that plural thing into how effectively is uh, what can make you a good collector and uh, my view nowadays a lot of profit i mean most of my colleagues and uh, who are from uh, mostly from heading the collection functions in their organization they all will be having a lot of pressure from their business heads that boss mera profit tum pe depend karta hai is saal so that that's what is the importance of all of us so uh, i mean bonus is one thing yes everyone strives for so that, that that is one thing yeah i mean it's february month and you are reminding everyone about bonus good uh, anyway so uh, i think we have covered most of the points related with this so uh, if uh, all of you are done with uh, your points we can move ahead for uh, uh, asking questions from uh, the audience or anything anybody would like to add Yeah, good to go. Yes. Yeah, so any questions from the audience?